Hello, I'm Betty Peterson, and I want to talk to you about how you can test your infant's hearing. You know that children who don't hear don't learn to talk. And it's very important that if your child has a hearing problem, that you get early treatment, early diagnosis, and early amplification if needed. The average age of diagnosis of a profoundly deaf or severely deaf child is 14 to 18 months, which means that he'll be nearly two years behind other children of the same age. Whereas a, a moderately deaf or mildly deaf ch uh, hard of hearing child may uh, uh, go until he's six years old before he's discovered. He may already be a failure at school by that time. Mothers may suspect uh, hearing losses, but others may tell her that uh, she's over anxious or that uh, babies can't be tested uh, until they're older. That's really not true. It's very easy to tell if your baby has normal hearing uh, when it's a few weeks old or if it has a profound hearing loss. And I'm going to show you how you can do it. But first, I want to talk about some of the children who would fall into the high-risk category. There are 10 categories that constitute at-risk. If you or your baby fall into any of these categories, it's very important that you check your baby's hearing. Now, not all diabetic mothers have deaf babies, but there's a greater risk. And not all premature babies are deaf, but a higher number than average have hearing problems. So it's very important that you check your baby's hearing so that you'll feel comfortable about what he hears. Now I'd like to tell you how to prepare the materials that you're going to use for your baby's test. All of these items can be found in the home. This is just a mayonnaise jar with a handful of macaroni. But listen, it makes a nice high frequency sound. This is an aluminum soft drink can with six little safety pins in it. We use high frequency sounds when we test babies because if a child has a sensory neural hearing loss, it's usually one that is greater in the high frequencies than in the lows. This is just a teaspoonful of rice in an orange juice can, and listen. That can wake a baby. Push it down. Tell him bye bye. Craig is one year old. He's interested in new and different sounds, alert to everything. The noisemakers I've shown you are calibrated at about 19 inches from the ear, so they should be held about that distance out of his line of vision. Be careful not to try this test more than three times in sequence as he would tire of it and not respond. Children extinguish very early, very easily. Another sign of adequate hearing at this age is his recognition of words such as mommy, daddy, bye-bye, or light. Craig is aware of everything. of age, a hearing baby already has a repertoire of familiar sounds that he recognizes. The car driving up, the refrigerator door slamming, mommy's voice. Without amplification, a deaf baby misses that early learning period. Andrew is typical of normal babies of that age, alert to new sounds even though he's very busy. It's a good idea to have a helper to distract him from what you're doing behind his back. Some babies are too busy playing to attend, and then it's better to test while the baby is having a bottle or becoming drowsy. You can see that Andrew is torn between playing with his toy and looking to see what it was that he heard. I thought you never know. 
I thought you knew. Look at my macaroni and mayonnaise. Okay. <laughs> Ryan is deaf, diagnosed while still in intensive care. She's a noisy baby. If she vocalizes loud enough, she can hear her own voice. It's very important that hearing impaired children get early amplification, hearing aids, as soon as possible. She needs constant auditory input to learn to talk. You'll see how she responds with hearing aids a little later in the tape. Since she hasn't heard from birth, she's already learning to rely on her vision. Here you can see she's using peripheral vision to monitor her environment. The newborn baby shows more subtle signs of hearing. You can see her eyes widen. She stops sucking. There's a change in breathing rate. A baby her age jumps when loud sounds are presented, but this doesn't rule out a moderate or high frequency hearing loss. Further testing with soft sounds may still be needed. The best time for testing is while nursing but not too hungry, or beginning to be drowsy, or erect and alert on mother's shoulder. You can see Lori freeze just as a little woodland animal does to an unusual sound. When, what made you discover that Ryan had a hearing loss? Because you did discover it very early and she has gotten hearing aids very early. We had been watching her, and she hadn't had no startle reflex to any noise, not even the dogs barking sitting right next to her. She wouldn't turn her head to any noise. We called her name. She wouldn't respond. Mm -hmm. It was as if she was ignoring you totally. One reason why we were aware that she may have a hearing problem was because she was in the hospital for three months when she was born, and they had told us that due to medication that she was taking that she could possibly have a hearing impairment. So he was, she was a high-risk baby. Was she premature? No, she wasn't. She was full term, but she was born with a respiratory problem. Well, she's certainly hearing now. How do you feel that hearing aids have made a difference uh, with Ryan and the family? She responds to s some noises. She mm -hmm. responds to the dogs now, which is, and she responds very well to her father's voice. But it's it's also helped us a lot because it eases our worries. I think that's the main thing that uh, we realize that there's hope. You know, where at first it was really kind of devastating for us that even though we had her and we could see she was gonna be okay health-wise, it was kind of hard for us to then accept the fact that she was going to have a hearing impairment. But, but with the hearing aids, it's, you know, we see there's hope. She responds more and more all the time, and it really makes us realize that, that someday she's going to be able to lead a normal life. Ryan hasn't had her first birthday yet, but already she's off to a better start than many hearing impaired children of the same age. I can't emphasize enough the importance of early identification and early amplification. If you don't feel completely comfortable about your child's hearing after doing these simple tests, please consult your physician and ask for a referral to an audiologist for more complete hearing testing.